Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of We Create Music TV. I am, now what's good, everybody? I'm your host, B. Vaughn. And today, man, we got my guy, my man, sync strategist, Nelson K. Johnson. Yo, y'all give it up for my man. What's good, Yo, brother? What's up? What's up? How you doing you know, tonight? I, 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 I still got to do the clap. Y'all doing it? Okay. <laughs> I like the horn, the horn, the, the. Give it up for my guy. What's good, brother? Man, not too much, man. Um, thank you for having me. Shout out to everybody out there watching. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm ready, man. How you doing tonight? Man, I'm good. I'm good, man. It's a good day. I ain't had to go to work today. So I took the day off. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So it's a good day. Yeah. I recently rode into film school. You said you recently did what? You said you did what? I went. I enrolled into film school. Oh, yeah, yeah. How you feel? You're hey, hype. That's good. Hype. I'm ready. I'm ready for you that. Should, but yeah. We show us some movies. Oh, we should. Oh, bro. We're gonna take it to a. We're gonna take it to a. A whole nother place. Yes, sir. Oh, definitely, man. Yes, yeah, sir. That's, that's exciting, man. I'm happy for you. I'm, man, that's, I'm happy that's, for you. That's, that's super excited, man. Yeah, it's, it's going to be dope. I'm happy for you, brother, because I know the things that have been going on in your life and the journey that you've been on. And man, so let's talk about that. Let's let's get into into all of that. So can you just take us to the beginning? Like, how did right, you start so, into this whole music thing? All right. So um, let's go back to the beginning. Just like most of us in sync licensing or music in general, um, I've always produced music. OK, so. I don't have a super extensive music background, but I've always, you know, had that interest in music. Okay. Um, throughout high school, you know, I freestyled in the lunchrooms. Uh, I did beats on the table and things like that. Um, eventually I started recording my music and I had aspirations of being a rapper and that's kind of like where it all started, you know? So I wanted to be a rapper and I wanted to, you know, make it big and be famous and all those things. And as I progressed, um, you kind of find out the logistics and what it actually takes to be a big artist or a top selling artist and um, actually make it in the industry. And not saying that's not what I wanted to do, but you know, you had to go out and meet fans and do all these kind of things. And that's mm -hmm. not, I wanted to play the background, you know, to be honest, because that was just a part of my personality. But um, I still did shows. You know, I did shows, went to different states to do shows, um, had mixtapes out, everything. But obviously my beats. So I made, mm -hmm. again, I made my own beats. And that was really because a lot of people weren't really messing with my beats like that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, oh, I, I can't rap on this because I've always made stuff that sounded fun to me, you know, and where I was from, it was more like, it was a lot of, you know, street music and that's just not what it was that I did. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, as I got a little more savvy on the business side, I would say, I kind of leaned more into wanting to figure out like, well, how can I make money from my beats? Like if nobody's buying them and if nobody's wanting to rap on my beats, you know, like, well, what can I do? So I mean, I rapped on them myself and we're going to fast forward to about 2013 or so. Um, I call him my bro, um, Joe Ryan. Um, he was actually scoring or he actually scored a show um, called uh, Toys Family Affair. I think it was. And um, he was working on something and I had an opportunity to travel to California. So I traveled to California for a couple of months to work on some things. And that kind of exposed me a lot more to actually getting music in film and TV. And this part right here, I feel like is very important. Um, again, I dropped everything and I was working at the time. And a lot of artists or anybody have this mentality sometimes where it's like, you know, a starving artist mentality, you know, like you have to get out there, and get out the mud, or you have to get out there and you have to struggle to make it and things like that. Right. Um, so I had that mentality as well. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to quit my job. And it was a decent job. You know, I traveled with the job and everything. Um, quit my job and zoomed out to California. You know what I mean? So uh, I put my faith on it. I'm like, yo, I'm going to get out here. 
And I spent a couple of months out there and it, it was great. You know, I had a lot of good opportunities, met some good people. Mm-hmm. And um, not, un- not unfortunately, but the time came to an end, you know, and I started to travel back home. The unfortunate part was on my way home, I got arrested. And a lot of people don't really mm. know that. And um, I'm actually writing a book that's going to talk about that, about the risks that you can take and how having faith and how having God in your corner really helps to amplify who you are and what you want to do in life. Um, anyhow, driving through and I got arrested. All right. Now, this is the starving artist part for everybody out there. You don't necessarily have to struggle. You have to definitely be smart. And unfortunately, I wasn't being smart because I had a car note. You know what I mean? I wasn't paying <laughs> car note. You know what I mean? I had all my money I saved and, you know, blowing it, right? Um, and again, I got arrested and it was for Grand Theft Auto, right? Um, and it, it, was a, it was a suit involved, so I can't really elaborate much past that, mm-hmm. right? However... I spent 21 days in jail, right, for stealing a car that I had the keys for and I was making payments on up until right. some point, right? So, G- again, real life GTA. Uh, yeah, for, <laughs> for real. <laughs> like, uh, so I got the car, man, like they had me handcuffed. And um, I mean, stuff happened between that though, right? But at, at that point, they're asking me questions and they're like, okay, you're under arrest for um transporting stolen goods across all these state lines and i was in utah so every state from california to utah that's what they're saying i was transporting stolen goods which was a car right then of course grant that father because I stole the car what it was crazy weird man. charges man and it was just the craziest thing and i'm gonna think to myself like this is this is impossible you know what i mean so again i ended up spending 21 days in um in jail man and it, it wasn't necessarily the hardest thing i've ever done but it actually opened up my eyes to really like who i was and what i was capable of doing and what i actually wanted to pursue and what i mean by that is again i've always you know had this feeling you know that i wanted to be um, successful in the music industry in some capacity, but I didn't really know exactly what that was going to be. But sitting there for 21 days in a jail cell, the craziest thing, had never been in trouble, never been arrested before. But sitting there, it it dawned on me like, yo, man, you, you've been blessed with the skill and the smarts. You know, you just have to slow down and take it easy. So I contemplated, you know, all those 21 days and really had it made up in my mind you know did a lot of prayer and had it made up in my mind exactly how i was going to approach the game right and when i got out you know i made it back to michigan and then that's where i like to say i became the sync licensing strategist because i was no longer in a place like california you know where there was an industry you know Mm -hmm. i was no longer in a place that um i could simply maybe reach out to someone or somebody put me into a situation you know i was back home in michigan there wasn't really an industry here for really what i wanted to do so i had to find out ways to you know um reach those goals and so Mm -hmm. again i put my head down for for months and i studied and i really focused a lot on trying to become smarter at my approach you know and try to get a little more creative with my approach in terms of getting my music on um, on TV and in film. And so right. that that led all of that played a part into where I got today or where I am today, where um, I've done theme songs. Um, actually, a show that I did a theme song for or produced the music for a theme song. Um, it premiered tonight on um, All Black. So that was an amazing moment for me as well to be able to turn it on and watch it you know right. last summer i had the opportunity to do a title song on growing up hip-hop you know so these opportunities came from strategizing you know and i like to tell these stories because a lot of people have this misconception that I mean, you have to travel to new york or you have to mm. travel to california or you have to go to where these industries are down in nashville you have to go to these places in order to 
make it or succeed. You know, right. we all have our our own definition of success, of course. But for me, it was getting my music and film and TV, and I couldn't hop a flight every single you know every single day right. yep. or every single weekend back and forth. So it's like, yo, what else can you do? And that's when I started to study and try to figure out creative ways to get you know to, to reach my goal and to get what I wanted mm-hmm. out of the situation. So yeah. that's that's my kind of like my backstory there. Yeah, man, that's, you know, that's, that's crazy because, you know, back in the day you had to travel to those places, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I think that was even for me, even for me, why I moved to Atlanta was because of that, you know, perception is that you had to move to a city that has some type of industry. If you really wanted to make it as a producer, as an artist, songwriter, whatever you had to kind of move. So, so, so that was the, the perception that you had to move to these places, but with, technology and modern technology and the way that you can use it and uh, how things in, and from a technological perspective has opened up the doors, man, you know, if, if I would have known that, which I should have yeah, known, right. I right. may not have Definitely. had to move to Atlanta. I mean, I'm, I'm thankful yeah. being in Atlanta. I love it, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I probably never really had to leave St. Louis. Yeah. And that's absolutely true, man. And that's what I meant again by being smarter. You know, I sat mm-hmm. there and I thought about, it. I'm like, man, um, my aunt used to always tell me, you're always on the internet. You need to learn how to uh, make money on the internet. Or, you know, she used to just be, you know, messing mm-hmm. with me all the time about being on the internet so much. But again, I had time to contemplate and just really think to myself, like, there has to be an easier way. And that was the way. The way was, yo, technology is a thing. Instagram is a thing. Twitter and Facebook is a thing. And on the other side of the business, like we do see people on films, like in the big movies and on a radio, but at the core, like they're just regular people who do regular things. And that right. was a part of my strategy, changing my thinking. Like, okay, well, I get busy sometimes, you get busy, they mm-hmm. get busy too, maybe on a higher level, but at the end of the day, like you can still reach them. You know what I mean? If you go through the proper channels, but they're reachable, you just have to do the work. But a lot of us want to mm-hmm. take Instead of going A, B, C, we want to go straight from A to Z. You know, Z. this is definitely the game of um, patience. But technology played a huge part in um, my even my, my very first placements. You know, it played a huge part um, in, um, for instance, monogamy. Um, we're in season three of monogamy right now, and I'm a part of the music team that's scoring um, the current season and mm-hmm. scoring season one as well. And again, I made that connection through Facebook. You know, just simply wow. searching, made a connection through Facebook. It didn't happen right away, though. You know, it didn't happen right away. I had to be patient. And then the opportunity came up and I was prepared. And that opportunity that I found through technology on Facebook, you know, as a part of my strategy, turned into right. three seasons of a super dope show, you mm-hmm. know, that up again like three times already, you know, so. Yeah, for sure. So, okay, so so I'm gonna do some. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you there for a second because I want to ask, right? I don't I don't want to wait till later because you already started talking about it. So what are some of those? Because people always want to know. People always think that there's like a, you know, secret to this whole music game, and I think a lot of it is just hard work and making the right connections. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so, so even with technology, how you can share all you can share as much detail as you want about that, <laughs> but. Y'all better how, tune in, man. Listen, y'all, how, y'all, y'all better right tune now, in. Like, how did you right do now. that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, of course, of course, you had to be patient. You know, and all through that process. But, like, how do you how do you start making those connections? Uh, you know, I'm asking for a friend. You know, what I'm saying like, yeah. how do you... <laughs> So listen, all the friends out there, check it out. Um, this is some some gems, and I love sharing this information actually because it definitely like helps people. You know what I mean? And I've always. Um, at some point I was at, in that position where I'm asking these questions and it's hard to get an answer. Um, so for, for me and what I also tell people to do, it definitely starts with research, right? And you will hear the term reverse engineer a lot as well, but it starts with the research and it starts with understanding who is who and who does what, okay? Because when you watch a movie, we definitely hear the music and you see the actors, right? 
But I mean, there's people that do the makeup. There's people that do the wardrobe. There's people, there's so many moving parts in this film or this TV show. And you really have to become familiar with what those roles are exactly. So I spent a lot of times, you know, studying up on that and trying to figure out like, well, what does a music supervisor actually do? You know what I mean? Like, what is their mm-hmm. actual job every, like on a day-to-day basis? You know, are they sitting in front of a screen editing something? You know what I mean? What does a music coordinator do? What does an editor do? What does perhaps um, a music editor do? Because you have the film editor and then you have a music mm-hmm. editor. You know, you have to know these these things. So for me, the first thing I do um, is I, I look at my target, okay? So I say, this is the show that I want to be on, or this is a show that I want to have music on. It's not going to always work for you, but that's initially where I start. And then I go through and I check. Um, I know you guys heard of IMDb probably, but if not, IMDb is a site where um, they show you like, films and TV shows, and they show you who's a part of those shows, okay? So I go there and then I start researching and I say to myself, who's getting hit up the most? Of course, it's gonna be a music supervisor because everybody wants to hit up the music supervisor, right? And after I say this, then everybody's gonna probably start doing this, but you know, everybody wants to hit up a music supervisor, right? Then you have a music coordinator. Maybe everybody wants to hit up a coordinator. That you have the um, the actual editors, you know, that maybe people want to hit up the editors. So those are things that I look for. I kind of look for like, well, who who would I have the a better chance of reaching out to and connecting with, other than a music supervisor or other than a music coordinator? Mm-hmm. Then I just start with engineering and figuring out maybe other things that they work that they um, that they've worked on in the past, and I say, well. I don't want to go too far back because now I start to sound cliche. I know, I, I, and I keep it real with myself. You know, I'm like, I know I I didn't watch their show. You know, so I don't want to open up and say, hey, I loved I love the music or I love what you did on such and such show when I've never watched it. You know what I mean? And so I try to remain as authentic as possible. And the most important thing is I cut to the chase. I introduce myself. And I let them know exactly what it is that I want and what I am trying to accomplish, whether it is whether if I want to get on the phone with them or if I want to send them some music, whatever it may be. I just let them know what it is exactly that I want. OK. And the reason that is, is because a lot of times I see a people um, kind of approach the situation and they say, hey, you know, how's um, how, how about that basketball game the other day? You know, you try to like fill them out a little bit, but what I learned, and it's actually a funny story. I had a chance to talk to a supervisor and she was very, very concise with how she spoke to me. And that taught me a lot because some people, again, some people are very specific. Mm -hmm. Others like, you know, like to shoot the stuff around. Right. But a lot of people, especially supervisors and people in this industry, they don't have time to chitter chat with us back and forth a lot of times so they're just like hey what's up what do you want what do you need um i even made the mistake one time of giving an entire background on who i was what i did this that and the other and after that you know what the reply was the reply was well what do you need me for right Mm -hmm. and so you know I, i didn't take i didn't take it to heart i just understood she's like okay well I have things to do. What what do you want? So that taught me to be straightforward when I'm reaching out to people. So that's where I start. I start with a plan saying, do I have an opportunity to get on this show? Right. When you have bigger shows, again, when I say understand the people who are involved, when you have a bigger show, you would definitely see the music supervisor, but you might see a composer, but this might be the composer that they have for this entire show. Sometimes it's like literally not really one person, but there's one entity that does the music for these shows, Mm -hmm. right? And they keep consistent. And sometimes there's not room to just send random music and things like that. It's almost predetermined in in a way because they have their circle. These people come up together and things like that. And so if it's a huge show, I'm like, 
this show probably already has a composer. So I research it and I say, oh, every single season, every single episode, same composer, which means that they're probably locked in. Not saying you don't have a chance, but it's like, you know, we just keep it moving. We're trying mm-hmm. to find the, the quickest way or the easiest way to get our foot in the door, at least. And so I find a show, again, that I see has a um, definitely like reality shows, you know, that has a high opportunity for me that I can create myself. OK, and I reach out to definitely I reach out to editors. That's for sure. Um, and the coordinators, I keep the supervisors last most of the time, but I reach out to those people. I, I have reached out to people who have done makeup on a show before, and that mm-hmm. has gotten leads. And I even I've, I've even taken it to the top and reached out to executive producers because, again, it's a it's a psychological thing. You don't you think like there is no way the executive producer is going to talk to me. Right. When the whole time, probably nobody ever hits them up because mm-hmm. that's what that's what they think, you know, so you might have that small window. All right. So as far as that, again, I research. Now, the next phase is extremely important. The next phase is I really try not to be intrusive on their social media. So um, good luck. Well, not really like good luck, but when you get. Facebook is a good example. You know what I mean? You can send a request, but Facebook is really, really good at filtering messages that, you know, and you, they don't, know, you, don't, right. you don't even know where they are, right? right. So it, it's kind of like a good luck thing when it comes to Facebook. However, you can always just really research and like learn their social media language. And what I mean by that is if you find somebody on Twitter or on Instagram or you're lucky to get them on Facebook, Look at what what they post and when they post. Okay, so let's say you found a show, show that you like, and you want to get on show X Y Z. You find the music coordinator or the supervisor or editor or music editor. You find these people that you say I'm going to go find them on Instagram, right? So you find them on Instagram. Now you just look at their pattern. Like, do they post every single day? Do they post every Monday? What are they posting? Do they post a lot about cats? Do they post a lot about, um, I don't know, food? Do they post a lot about their work? You know, you have to learn their social media language. And that's because they you might hit them up and they just might not be on. Like they might post like once a month. So your chances might be a little slim. But if you can say, okay, I noticed that this person posts something every Monday. Right. And you can you can find those patterns. It's just like anything else. You know what I mean? But you can find those patterns. And when you find a pattern, you can say, all right, I know that there's a likelihood that this person is going to post on Monday. So on Monday, I'm going to hit them up. Right. You need to figure out where they're from. If you're on the East Coast and they're on the West Coast, you don't want to send them a message when it's you know when you're just waking up because. It's gonna. It might go way down to the bottom, or you might send them a message when it's super early or super late on their side of town. So again, you have to understand that too. Like, well, where do they live, maybe, or where are they located? If you can find that um, that information, mm-hmm. like it's, it's out there. Sometimes you just have to. Again, you got to dig and use what you have. But again, find out the social media language and reach out to them at an appropriate time and in an appropriate manner. If you see a person who is, who seems to have, um, I would say like, a, again, a very concise way of posting things or mm-hmm. talking about social media, that means you know how to approach them. If they do a lot of jokes or memes, maybe, maybe you can be funny with them. You know what I mean? So those are a lot of things that I took into consideration and I tried over and over again until I found a formula that worked for me. Right. And, mm. um, a lot of times when you hit them up, what I like to do is, and this is a golden nugget, what I like to do is I like to go to their very, very last picture on their timeline, right? I'll hit them up and say, hey, hey, what's up? How you doing? I want to talk to you, right? Something like that. I go to their very last picture in their timeline and I say, hello, so-and-so. I just wanted to let you know that I wrote you. And I would really like you to read it, but it might get filtered. I just wanted to give you a reminder, right? Because mm-hmm. that does two things. Instagram, especially again and Facebook, they filter messages, right? So if that happens, they're definitely going to get a notification. And a notification is like, 
who commented on my picture from five years ago? That's, right. that's weird, right? They want to see what it is because it's an old picture. So mm -hmm. when they see what it is and they see that I said, hey, I wrote you something, they're like, that's, I guess that that's cool. They go see it. <laughs> you, have a, you have a chance for them to go in and, mm -hmm. and see it. Because you know I mean? as humans, we naturally want to connect with other people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's part of their job in post-production music is definitely a part of their job so that's just a part of a, a strategy that that i use that i've had success with in the past and i use to this day still you know again to network and connect with people and most of the time it it really turns into a okay hey send me a link or it might turn into oh we already wrapped wrapped it up or we use this music library or mm -hmm. we use which is another part which i I will call it the third part of the strategy from the researching. Then you find them and understand them on social media. Now, the third part of that is going to be you have to ask the right questions. OK, you have to ask the right questions. And one of those questions isn't, hey, what kind of music are you looking for right now? And the reason that is because everyone asks them that question. Okay. So you have to be creative in what you ask and how you ask that question, because that's going to give, that's going to kind of separate you from everyone else. And again, I have my own techniques, but again, that's just what I do. So I just implore you to really think of a creative way to kind of get your question out there without necessarily being around a bush. You know what I mean? Again, definitely be direct and tell them what you want. But you have to, again, you have to get creative with how you approach people. So that's the third part, getting creative with how you approach them, because everyone has their own, um, again, their, their own personalities. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And some people might get agitated at the same question over and over. And read their bio. Read their bio, too, please, because sometimes in a bio, it li literally says, do not submit music here. Right? <laughs> and it's weird because that, that happened to me before, you know, I went mm -hmm. in, did, did my, did my thing only to see that they read it and ignored me. And I go back, I'm like, uh, says not to send the music here. Right. right. And so I just kind of like gave myself an unnecessary black eye, so to speak. Right. Mm. So again, to, to me, that's just a part of the strategies that I've, um, that I've used to really go in and understand who you want to talk to, understand like their job. Because a music supervisor, again, a music supervisor might not necessarily sit down and like write a contract out for you or get mm -hmm. you an agreement or have time to tell you. But a music coordinator might have a time, might have the time to tell you about an agreement. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or um, music libraries. Music libraries are huge. You know what I mean? When you connect with people in that industry, ask about their um, which music libraries they use, right? Because that's that's a smart thing because they'll be able to tell you, well, go to go to this music library or this is my favorite things like mm -hmm. that because that ultimately help you. But again, those are just three things that I've used strategy wise to kind of break into the industry, and I use them over and over. And over again because i feel like there's really no need for me to change it because it's, it's, <laughs> working. it's working it's really, it's really been working out for me you know what i mean you have to adjust at times but the overall thing is to be concise with what it is you're you're saying you mm -hmm. know and what you want from them make that clear understand their personality as much as you can and understand their their role you know and i think a lot of people right. from you know, with coaching or sessions that I have, I find out like those three things are kind of what people skip over. They just want to go straight to, hey, I have this music for this show that you did. And that's not going to, everybody does. You know, we all right. have the perfect song for this show. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. just a natural thing that we're going to always think. So those mm -hmm. are just my three top um, nuggets right there. Just really, you know, understand the people um understand their personality on social media and things like that so right yes. yeah yeah I'm, you know my, my, my friend is going to be real appreciative that you dropped them the, well we don't, we don't have we don't have nuggets on on the show we got we got gems 
Ah, you know gems. There we, we, we got, go. We got, we, we got these. Drop a couple of them. Dro dropping some of these gems, <laughs> right? People know, right? People know. But exactly. yeah, yeah. Yo, if, Absolutely. For those who are watching, you better, y'all better take note because those are major gems, nuggets, right? Gems right there. Yeah. I, lo I love the amazing. fact you talk about uh, learn their social media language. I don't think a lot of people kind of even understand what that is, but you know, I'm, I'm glad you, you explained it for them because you, when you really think about it, you know, think about how people post on social media, what they post on social media, how they conduct themselves on social media. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that's, I, once again, this, the advent of technology allows doors to open up to a world of people that you probably never had contact with. Like, man, I remember back in the day, there was no way, no way. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a talk, I'm a talk about them, but you know what I'm saying? If you ever watch a show, I'll just call them, let them know. But like, there was no way I could ever befriend anybody from, you know, the R&B groups that we used to listen to back in the day. There was like, no way. Like, how, how am I going to get in contact with somebody from Boys to Men or 112 right. or like 112? But I'm, I'm good homies with somebody from the group 112 now. That's because, you know, technology. <laughs> You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like tech, technology allows you to do those things. So you, can, you, can, you can't get around it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's here you can. It's, in front of us. it's like it's made for us to use, you know, mm -hmm. and anybody who's anybody, they, they, they look at it at least, you know, you just have to, you know, if you get in that little window, right. they might if they look at it, they might say, oh, OK, cool. You know, you can set up a phone call and the rest is going to be history for you. Mm -hmm. Like one of the things you can't do is like, hey, check out my SoundCloud and my DM because mm. I don't like that. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I'm anybody. I just don't like that. Like, I get tons of messages, kind of like you talk about learning the social media language. Mm. I get tons of messages. Hey, I just dropped a new song today. Um, can you listen to it? It's like, I don't even know who you are. You know, like right. provide or, me some context. Right. Or send, you know, just send something with no context. No context. All, I'm not sure what you want me to do with it. You know what I mean? And especially today's know. industry, it's it's so it's so weird because you, somebody can send you something today. Years later, they can be like, I remember I messaged you my song, and now my song is number one in the country. You know what I mean? Like that stuff happens because people mm -hmm. just you, know, you you don't tell anybody anything. You know what I mean? You just send right. something. You don't say anything. So again, definitely learn the social media language and under, understand what they want you know and a lot of times people put mm -hmm. that stuff in their bio you want to send music send it to this website or send it to this address you know what right. i mean that they, a lot of people do that too mm -hmm. yeah so man so i appreciate them them gems you just dropped right there people need to uh people need to check that out you know what i'm yeah, saying like one, one more thing to add definitely um you know, definitely take those and hold those close. You know, they might seem, they might seem minor, but it's extremely important. And I say that because I've definitely had success in this field and what I was doing before was not working, you know, spamming, mm -hmm. like spamming, links, mm -hmm. um, spamming account, like all, that was not mm -hmm. working for me. The questions that I asked were not working for me. The dry emails, that stuff was not working. So I did something different. And that worked out for me. So yeah, <laughs> right. Definitely, I mean, hey, definitely try it out. You know. Look, look. When you were talking about um, asking the right questions, just don't ask what type of music you're looking for. Because <laughs> <I'll be like, laughs> they, they, they don't know. I mean, they they, they, they know what know. they want. You know, right. but it's like they, they they don't they don't know because they they could be working on one thing today and they work on something else tomorrow. You know what they need I mean, just, right now. You, you know, they're like. I don't know what I'm I don't know. for. Like, what do you have? I guess. You I know? mean, just so just. That. I mean, just change up the question, right? Instead of mm -hmm. like, well, what type of music are you looking for? What type of co musical compositions tickle your fancy today? Like, you yeah. ask. Some... <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but seriously, like, like change like, it I up. Mean, right? They were like, it's, yeah. it's real, you know, it's yeah. real. And then one thing I like to ask also, um, and you might want to hit that, you might want to hit that that gym button. All right, this is exclusive to here. Um, if you've talked to me before, you probably heard this, but a way to start engagement, just like when we post on social media, 
You want to get your account. You want people to engage in your account. You want people. <laughs> you want people to really um, interact with you. What you can ask, and it's a good idea. That, again, a music supervisor, ask them um, to fill you in or let you know that you want to talk about their music selection process, right? So it's almost the same thing as you said, like, hey, what kind of music are you looking for? Just kind of repackage it and say, mm -hmm. hey, hey, Brian, um, when you have a minute, I would like to learn more about your music selection process. Now, it seems like a broad question, but it's literally just saying, hey, Brian, I want you to tell me about you and what you do. You know what I mean? You can make it about them and that kind of kind of reels them in a little bit to at least give you a little bit of engagement. And that's the name of the game. Once you get that engagement right. and you can put somebody in, now you can say like, oh well, when you're when you're picking your music, what makes you pick this over that? Then you can kind of build that dialogue instead of just going mm -hmm. in with again, like Hey, did you see the basketball game last night? Oh, by the way, I make music. And again, learn. <laughs> you know, it's like learn a social media language because by the time, by the time you message somebody, mm -hmm. and I, I, I could say Brian probably did it for me. I did it. For every, anybody who's anybody, when somebody follows you or somebody messages you, chances are you've already said who is this. You went to go check out their profile, right? So just keep that in mind, like. The people in these this industry, they're they're just normal people. You know, you message them, they go to your profile, they probably already look and they probably already know that that you do music. You know, if you're if you do have music on your profile or in your bio, especially mm -hmm. those of us who are getting into sync or who are into sync licensing, they're gonna look at our profile, they're gonna see like, oh, he got he has places on MTV, BT and all this stuff. Right. They're like, well, I already know what the next question is going to be, you know, so definitely get creative and really kind of take time to authentically get to know about a person, you know, and that also helps you learn about their job titles and what they actually do and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah gems. That's, 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 gems. A, that's a gem right there. And I really like that one a lot for certain. Gems, drop them. You know, one I'm going to get, I need to figure out how to get a, um, like a gym thing that goes over the screens. And when, when this gym, I can drop like a <laughs> thousand, sure. if, I can drop like can a thousand it, can, uh, gyms. If anybody, if anybody can get it, you can get it. You should, you can get it. You should, you should definitely. So, so I, we actually got a question from one of the viewers. I don't know if you want to yeah, answer actually, it, but yeah, we, we actually ahead. do have a question. I'm going to add it. Okay. What's the difference between the sync licensing industry and the music industry as far as the music placement goes? Yo, mm. songwriter, heart of the pen. Oh, you yep. must got some fire. You must got some fire, heart of the pen. Fire. So, so the the difference I would say is accessibility. Okay, and what I mean by that, when we're talking about sync licensing, right? We're talking about like films, video games, commercials, and we know that that's like a thriving industry. That's literally twenty four seven get on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, that stuff, the visuals and music matching is a constant thing, right? With the music industry, it's more focused on like, maybe like like a, like a particular artist, right? And typically the artist comes up with a producer and they come up with a camp or something like that. So to me, it makes it a little harder to say, you know, Hey, I want to get this beat to to Jay Z, or I want to get this beat to Twenty One Savage or Beyonce, right? That's a little harder than saying, "Yo, I want to get this same beat, but I want to get it on MTV, or I want to get it, or it's easier rather." Um, or did I say harder? So, getting your beats on TV is a little easier than it is to get it to a major artist. Um, there's definitely a lot of politics involved because, again, people already have the teams that they. You know that they came up with you know they already mm -hmm. have that and so it's a little hard to break in because again what are you going to do you have to send music through their management and most of the time you have to definitely have like a complete record but a lot of placements definitely come from people knowing people that can get you in you know in that door where you actually don't have that chance on 
online. And like again, you know, artists they they're in lawsuits all the time because a producer is like, hey, I sent, <laughs> I sent Chance the Rapper this beat three years ago and he used it. Now we got this whole litigation situation going mm-hmm. on. It's a liability kind of thing. Like you can send beats all day, but it's like, why why would they risk taking a beat, you know, or using a beat? and risk something happening down the line when they already have people in their circle who maybe can remake the beat for one, you know, which, which has happened before plenty of times, or they can just, you know, just skip on it and say, I want something like this, but something better. I want something that's just like this. So I think the main difference is accessibility because there's definitely more film and television productions than there are, artists making production i would say Mm -hmm. you know i think again having a wider range of where you can send your music definitely um definitely separates the two in my opinion yeah i think that's dope uh uh, yeah yeah i think that is is dope all because we always try to go right to you know the main artist yo i'm gonna send this beat right to jay-z today like it's gonna be in his gmail right (laughs) (laughs) along along with the other Ten thousand plus, right? Jigga I mean? at gmail.com. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, people think right. they can just email. Just I'm gonna send it right to Kanye, yeah. right? But look, Jim, look, Jim. Sometimes you, you like a lot of placements don't even come when it comes directly to the artist. It's through people that are connected to the artist, like, yeah. bro, the engineer. Like, if you get a uh, good relationship with some I, of the, I, I, don't, I don't have a gym button over here, but you can go bro. ahead and press it. There you go. Yes. The engine, oh, bro, the engineer, or somebody who kind of knows the artist, right? Maybe it's the brother, the manager. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Somebody like that. But get into that particular artist. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's because, like Nelson said, I mean, they already have their camp of people, like, and it's tough to break into like. The Beyonce camp, or the Jay Z, or the Kanye, or the Taylor right. Swift camp. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To get a to get a placement, but but where you can get crazy placements is like right there. Your peer group who are coming up. Find people who yeah. are uh, like regional type of artists who are kind of yeah. blowing up a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's kind of like what um, that's kind of like what Childish Major before he mm-hmm. got psh, before he blew up. A lot of people was like, oh, this dude's kind of hot. He got a little teeny buzz going for him in Atlanta. Cool, let me start linking with him. Now, child has made it and blew the heck up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so yeah. those that's people that's who were doing that. Absolutely true, yeah. Yeah, and so that, I, think that, I, think that, like, I think that definitely separates the two, though. You know, that definitely separates mm-hmm. the two. You have to, on the industry, music industry side, when they're making records and stuff, you have a better chance of being on the ground level. You know, the ground level, you come up, but again, you know, with TV, it changes. Season one, they might have this kind of flavor. Season two might be the flavor that you are that you specialize in. You know what I mean? So, or season three might be this flavor that you specialize in when mm-hmm. it comes to producing. So you have these ongoing opportunities. Yeah. Yep. Man. So okay. So I'm, I'm gonna. So Nelson, Nelson K. Johnson, the sync strategist, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> telling you. So okay. So I gotta go back. What, what was your MC name back in the day? <laughs> in that, well, okay, we gotta go back. So, um, my original when I first started rapping, it was Shorty, S H O R T Y, regular spelling. It was Shorty because you know I've always been short. Yeah, everybody, I'm short. <laughs> now you know. He's been right? height. So, um... <laughs> I'm, I'm height. I'm, I'm height challenged. Out height here. challenged. Yeah. It's all good. So, um, so I, I've always I call myself Shorty, right? Um, and then as I got older, I think I changed it to I for oh, it was Ace Murder, right? With Ace, Ace Murder? M- no, not Murder. Ace oh. Murder. Murder. Yeah, like, like murder. murder. Like you finna murder. Like M U R D A. Yeah. Murder. Yeah. yeah. So it was Ace Murder, right? Then I was like, ah, oh, man, that's too like. I'm not, I'm not a killer, right? You know, I'm like, hey, <laughs> you ain't a killer. That up. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't a killer. For real. So, um, uh, change it to Priceless. So, Priceless was uh, one of my last names. So, Priceless, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But then that was my MySpace days, and everybody had Priceless. I got approached by somebody that said, hey, that's my name, blah, blah, blah. It was, hey. it was crazy, you know. Um, 
Wow, right. Then I finally went to N.J. So Nelson Johnson. So N period J A Y. Instead of saying a period, I said dot D O T. So I was N.J. And that's when I really started, you know, um, doing a lot of my mixtapes and things like that. Um, and again, my last actual song I recorded at the time was about 2013, I think. Mm. Maybe earlier maybe earlier than that. And then for a while I had rapped. And then again, a couple of summers ago, well, not a couple of summers ago, last summer, then, you know, I got back on the mic and then did a theme song for, um, or a title song for Grown Up Hip Hop, where I got on the mic and I rapped with my um, my guy, Nick, you know, and it was, it was cool. I got back into the things and then since then, you know, we've been collaborating and making like super dope music again all across growing up hip hop, walking mm-hmm. Tammy, like actually rapping. Not necessarily being a rapper, but things just came full circle. You know what I mean? Right. Because for a while I'm like, oh man, what what am I gonna rap about? I'm not a rapper, you know, so it was kinda like a break. But yeah, my 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 original name was Shorty. Went all the way up to N dot J and now I guess I don't really, I'm not really a rapper, so I don't have a rap name, but yeah. So that, yeah, that, feel- that was my, my <laughs> N dot J. Look, I feel I look, I saw you posted one of the videos on um on Facebook. I think it was mm-hmm. it Facebook? Yeah. Yep. I was like, look at Nelson over there spitting them bars like that. Yep. Oh, wait, wait, like today? No, no, no. When did you post when did you post that um that clip on uh on Facebook? Was it Facebook or uh-huh. Instagram? I saw there was a clip that you posted. Was that you rapping? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not supposed to clip. Most like this is me rapping. But I <laughs> you know, I'll post a little, <laughs> little rap clip. So yeah, man. So it, it's fun, you know, I, I like it. It's fun, you know. Um, it gives again, you know, it gives a chance again to have to have fun and really to do right. everything I'm doing, like from producing the music to rapping and getting on the mic and performing and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So it's really, right. really dope. Right, right. Man, so so yeah, you know, I kind of think about I kind of think about that as well, and I wonder how many people kind of do the same thing. They go through, uh, you know, changes in their life uh, where they were known as something, and they cha- kind of change that, and they kind of change that. Uh, and kind of like me, when you get to the end, you kind of like, I'm just going to use my name, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's, <laughs> just... that's 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 true. Very very true. I like I, I don't know why what it is, but. Again, it, it's a full circle kind of thing. You know, you're finding yeah. yourself, you you just you're finding yourself in this music only to find that you are you. You know, what you I are mean? you. And and ultimately, like the rap names and things like that, those are like our uh, what they call like a persona. Right? Mm-hmm. Those are these things, these ideas that we made up about ourselves, and we have to keep in that character. But at what point you just revert back to like, man. I don't want to be a character. I'm just myself, and then right. it, it works, you know. And that that's really right. what sticks because it's most authentic, I think. That's right. Plus, I mean, I just wanted to be myself, so I just like going back <laughs> yeah. to be like going back Nelson to be Bevon versus versus you know Strict Nine or Sick Beats <laughs> yeah. or uh, B Rev the producer or uh, man, I don't have so many monikers. Yeah, wait, B B Rev, B Rev. Yeah. Be Rev the for, yes, what, brother. What was like, the Rev for? What was the Rev? Like, like Reverend. For? Like oh, yeah, okay. like like yeah, somebody. So, <laughs> so I so so I used to work at this company, right? <laughs> I'll tell the story. So I used to work at this company, and you know the people at you know I, I used to do training at this company, and so uh, people knew I, I would always come dressed up, and I looked like a Reverend. I guess because I was always in suits, you know, had this suit and tie, you know, uh, yeah, suit and tie, and I was like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, look, right here, we're gonna talk about it, and plus, I mean, plus being a, a plus being a Christian too, kind of yeah. was part of that, and so they kind of were like, oh, we're just gonna call you B Rev, and so yeah, that just stuck. I was like, so when I got into music, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be B Rev the producer, because people already know me as, yeah, and I didn't like that. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna change that, and then I changed it to Sick Beats, C I K Beats. Then I stuck for a minute, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't want to do that no more." And then it went to, to uh, from there to Strict Nine, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't want to do that no more." And I was like, "You know what? I'm just gonna be me." B like, Vaughn. But there, yeah. there we go. But yeah, it, it, it happens, man. I was definitely, definitely the same, the same exact way. But which which yeah. name was your favorite overall? 
Which name? Which uh, name did you like the best? Which name did I think was the like the dopest name? Yeah. Strict Nine had to be the dopest name because of what it meant. Because it what it what that mug meant to me from a musical production standpoint, that was the dopest one. But I always had to kind of be in that mode or kind of fit that, um, you know, persona. And I was like, I want to do that. I don't want yeah, to be me. Yeah, like that, and that's what. And so I, I think I definitely liked. Uh, I liked N. J. because it was closest to my my regular name, but mm-hmm. it was it was almost like a mouthful to be like. N. J. You know, N. J. You know what I mean? It's almost like a mouthful to say, really. So it's like, it's gonna, it's gonna be me. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be me. Like weird, crazy. I, yeah, outspoken me. So yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's, that's right. Me, though, man. Yep. That's right, man. Old rap days. Dad, can you believe it's been 51 minutes already? But see, I, I, look, I told you in the beginning, it was like, it was like talking to a homie. So you know, yeah, for those yeah, who are yeah, watching, like, it's, it's like talking to talking to a homie. Uh, you know, so, I, so so let's kind of let's kind of transition. I want to talk about some of your major challenges that you faced in your own musical career, and how did you deal with those, and what did you learn from it? Um, the one of the challenges that I faced was definitely, I w- I'm not going to say believing in myself. Um, I've always had a belief in myself that I could do it, but it was really. Um, believing that I could do it in the capacity that I do it now, right? Um, I always had a goal, but sometimes it's a challenge to really think, well, excuse me, to think bigger and to dream bigger because sometimes these things don't seem possible. You know, like, again, um, Notorious Queens, I was able to produce a theme song for that. Um, it just came out today, by the way, episode one, and I was watching it and I had this, this thought like, man, I remember days thinking like, I want to do a theme song one day. You know, it's not that I didn't believe I could, but it's just something that seemed so out of reach at the time. So one of my challenges was definitely um, becoming who I, like who I am, like who I really am on my music journey. And I think that's a challenge because we go through so many different transitions and we go through so many different times in our life. And sometimes you have to take that that leap of faith and it's just over the side of that other hurdle and you have to really jump over that but it's a little scary because you've never been there before so it's like man is this beat going to be good enough to get on tv or is this beat going to be good enough that they like it you know what i mean and of course mm-hmm. we think it's dope when we're listening to it our friends think it's dope but then when you start dealing with people in an actual industry it gets a little tough because you you never know what they're going to say you know and you you get shot down to some people say like I'm not feeling that at all. You know what I mean? And that can kind of cause you to take a step back. But that was like one of my um, one of my challenges really completely, instead of 99%, but 100% believing in myself. That was one of my challenges. And the other challenge was really accepting the fact that nobody owes you anything, right? Nobody owes you information. Nobody owes you a hookup. Nobody owes you an opportunity. I had to understand that because I would ask mm-hmm. questions and the people would, you know, they would give you the little, psh, psh, you know what I mean? Or they wouldn't give you anything. Uh, yeah. So I had to, I had to understand that and really say, it's not personal. That's, that's just how it is. It shouldn't be that way, but that is just how it is. So once I understood that I was able to, again, create my own opportunities and create my own strategies and really deal with it that way. Just understand it. I faced those challenges and I understood it internally. Like, that's how it is. That's not going to change because it's all, it's always been that way. You know, people rap about it, write songs about it. It's the same story over and over a lot of times. And so once I really took that to heart and I said, okay, I know that this is how it is. This is the reality. Then I could start creating something, you know, opposite of that. And that's what I, that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, man, I, Wow, I'm, I'm gonna drop a gem on that one. And the reason why is because I think a lot of people kind of struggle with that. Dealing with the fact if they're really good enough. Mm-hmm. Like, oh brother, you'd be surprised how many times I've made a beat and labored over that beat and my wife would come in and be like, yeah, that's done. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it's, it's not. Like, right. there's gotta be more to it. You can't, you know, and, or get into Our the- get in, Yeah, oh my gosh. 
own worst critic of just like, you know what? Nobody want to hear these beats. I'm not, I'm not that good. I, I don't know how to play. I don't know how to play keys. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know end up music theory. Man, my beats suck. Like nobody's gonna. And you know. And that, that, that'll, hold, yeah. that'll hold you down and hold you back because. Yo. That little bit Yo. of belief. You're on the next. You're on that next level. The next level is right on the other side of that little. That little belief. Look. Look right here. I've been reading. I just bought this book. Bruh. And that's. <laughs> yep. Bruh, I just bought this book. And the first thing he talks about. Man, the first thing he talks about in this book. Where, where's it at? It's like the very first thing he talks. He talks about in this. Russ. Man, I don't know why people hate on Russ. Russ is. 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 Is dope. Russ is so smart dope. Smart, guy, man, smart yeah. as a. As, as a mug when it comes to this whole music thing. But that's what he talked about. He talked about in his book. I'm gonna do a whole review on this book when I'm when I'm done with it. But he grab, talked about ah, oh, bruh. Yeah, I mean it's real little. You know what I'm saying? You could read this in about a day. You know what I'm saying? But I probably wouldn't read it in a day if you want to take like some notes and stuff. But he he talks about that. He talks about how he was crap in the beginning. He thought he was dope, but you know he was like, I listen <laughs> back now and all that music was 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 crappy. He said, but the thing that he had to learn was to be confident in himself. Regardless of anybody else, regardless of anybody else, it's like, who cares what the next person thinks? Who cares what, you know, and I, I see this a lot too, is that we always go to, to other people. So I'll say this as an example, right? Because we kind of had that. I'll be transparent. We kinda oh, had that yeah. You and I kind of had that conversation yeah, like yeah. today, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, you was like, yeah, you're like 94% there. I was like, maybe 24%, you know what I'm right. saying? But, but yeah, I mean, right. but, but. The reality is, is like, why does it really matter what somebody else thinks about the music? If you think the music is good, be confident in the music and believe in the music, believe in yourself that what you have as your product is good enough. But right. he talks about, you know, establishing for him, he established that confidence or arrogance, whatever people want to call it in the very beginning. And couldn't nobody tell him nothing. He was like, because yeah, in, the, yeah, in the book, he calls it be, uh, be delusional. I mean, yeah, and that that's yeah. true because again, once you once you conquer that, it's really no stopping you because and I always mm -hmm. tell people that and for those of you um who are watching and wanna get into sync licensing, like start now, start today, you know. Don't wait. A lot of I find a lot of people are waiting to get the music perfect or waiting to sculpt it. The reality is, again, you, you can ask me, you can ask anybody out there. I'm I'm not the one that's putting together the TV show, so I can't tell you. I can say like, yo, right. it's I I know I'm like it sounds dope. I could picture this in the show, but that's not going to get your music in the show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have you have to take the leap to get it to somebody who can make those decisions. You know, so somebody can say, oh yes, I like this. This beat that you were about to throw away was the most perfect beat for the theme song for every single show we made. Like you don't know until you actually step out and really take that chance. But you won't do that if you don't believe 100%. And we're all going to have self-doubt. You know, it's going to happen. And that's why you have people around you that bring you, you know, bring you back in and mm -hmm. remind you that you are dope and talented, of course. But it's going to start inside of you, you know. And it sounds cliche, right. but self-doubt, that, that'll stop you from, you know, create. You, you want to go in the studio today? Are uh, you doubting yourself? That could have been a day that you a hit record you know what i mean right. that could be a day that you connected with somebody that was really um able to change your life but you decided mm -hmm. oh, press i don't want to go in you know so it gets hard and it's something that you have to work on something that i work on every day but once you get past that barrier initially you know things will be a lot better so i'll definitely yeah. say keep that close yeah, yeah. So look, you got that. You got that right. So, so we have another question, uh, but, but the question really is in reference to, uh, and we kind of talked about this in our uh, the conversation on single licensing panel that you were a, a part of, uh, using samples versus using original music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like we talked about that in depthly. Yeah. So I would say, you know, definitely go back and check out that music, uh, the conversation on sync licensing. But I'll let Nelson Nelson kind of talk about that for a second whether it's better to use samples or have original music? Um, I would definitely say original. Um, funny thing, today, watching um, Notorious Queens, 
that song or the um, the show, I heard a track and it was very distinctive. I'm like, that's weird. I heard that before, right? So I'm sitting there with my wife and I'm like, hold up. I get up, came right to my computer. Bam. I have a, I did have a whole folder of um, Splice. Well, that when I was using Splice, I have this folder of the stuff that I downloaded from Splice. Sure enough, this Splice loop was used in that episode. Someone made a whole entire beat out of it, right? No harm, no foul. Cool, right? But the thing is, if they used it, that means someone else also used it, right? I could have used it. Brian could have used it. Anybody could have used that to create something. Now, sometimes with libraries, they have scanning software, right? That kind of shows um, when, uh, when a track has been played on TV, basically. So in theory, that track is playing with that splice loop, all right? Now, if it gets scanned from a different library that owns a similar track, they use the same loop, now you have a conflict because it's like, hey, that was my beat. Uh, no, we just use the same the same loop, right? So it gets a little sticky. Now, I would definitely say chop, chop the loops up, right? Make them sound your own. Alternatively, layer them. Don't let it play by itself. If you have that loop, make sure you got drums on it, a synth, some more keys. Kind of like tuck it in there where it's not really... Um, standing out, right? So again, it's definitely going to be up to you. Like when you talk about sampling records, like that's definitely a no-go with sampling records and old mm -hmm. songs and other songs like that. But when we're talking about um, loops or drum kits or construction kits that you get off loop sites and stuff like that, just be a little careful just because a lot of times it can cause problems. You know, you don't really don't want those problems in the long run. But do your best to kind of cover that up, manipulate it as much as possible so that it's not just the straight loop. Like, don't open up right. your beat with that loop and absolutely nothing else. And the truth of the matter is, um, Lotus Flower Bomb used loops. Um, a couple of albums or oh, a couple bro. of songs <laughs> on, uh, what was it? A couple of songs on Justin Timberlake's album that Timberland produced used Bruh. loops, right? Um, who else? Uh, Chris Brown. Um, can I cuss on her? No BS. I'll yeah, just say ahead. no BS. Oh, yeah. so Chris Not Brown, yet. um, no bullshit song. That was a loop. It's a yep. lot of records out look, there that use look, loops. Look, 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 hold, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna stop you there for a second because I went and asked Henny that. Mm. I asked Henny that. I saw Henny at a, a A3C. I saw Henny at A3C and I walked up to him and I said, Henny, I gotta ask a question. He was like, Yeah, hey, what's good? <laughs> I said, um, that Chris Brown, no BS song, that was a motion samples loop, wasn't it? He was like, heck yeah, that was. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> yeah, when I found, like, I'm going, I was going through one day, just like, well, oh, we talked, I think we talked about this. I think we, yeah, point. you and I talked about so, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through and I, I hear it, I'm like, hold up, this song, it's a, like, what? But they, yep. made, they made a hit record, you know, they made a hit record off of it. So it's not, it's not really shunned upon it's just you know you have to be careful because at the end of the day you know just understand but i think it's a difference i think it's a difference from a yeah i think it's a difference from a sync perspective versus an artist perspective you know what i'm saying like yeah oh, in the yeah, music most in the music industry right. yeah, i mean uh, like story. i told oh go ahead no 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 i, I said i tell people i mean your favorite producers are using loops mm -hmm. all day like all day all you right. you think they not you trust me you trust me, they are using yeah, loops. Are. Can, they can look, point look. Them out. Oh, I can point them out. I can point. I can point them out. I can go. Yeah, that's a loop right there. I probably got the loop pack that mm -hmm. that they that they use. Right, like Rihanna's birthday cake was a, a loop. Chris oh, Brown's yep. OBS, it, it, of course, was, was a loop. Yes, it was. I remember. It was. I did yep. not. I remember yep. when they had. Um, you said Chris Brown what? Uh, his the no BS of course was was a loop. Oh, um, tra uh, I mean, uh, Amy transform me or something. What was that? Who who sings that? Like uh, I forget I don't know. who that was. I might um, have to look that up. I think that was a loop also. Lil Wayne's okay. Mirror, the mm -hmm. song he made Mirror with him and Bruno Mars was a loop. Bro, I oh, mean wow. your favorite producers are using loops. Now I would say a loop perspective in music. Mm -hmm. eh, it's it's it's. You no know, people do that. 
The only thing is, right. you know, it, it, you put it on YouTube, YouTube is going to flag it as a yeah, copyright because... And same thing with Sync. Yeah, no, same it, thing with Sync. That, that, that same idea. So I, I'm i for being creative. I would say that, right? I don't right. like to tell people like, no, don't, don't use loops and sync, don't do this. Mm -hmm. Because again, even libraries will tell you like, if, if you don't, if you don't play the piano, Right, because most most people don't play. Some people play really well. Some people don't play. So you might want to right. You might want to use a piano loop. You know what I mean, or a MIDI pack or something like that. The thing is, just don't let the loop be the track. Right. You know what I mean. You might have the loop. Maybe maybe change up the chords a little bit. Especially you have the mm -hmm. MIDI. You know, chop it up, rearrange it, replay it, stuff like that. But definitely, just don't use a raw loop. And you got a kick snare and a hi hat. And then you drop out the drums <laughs> and you bring back the drums in. Don't don't approach it that way. Get creative with it. Man, like you I got it because I don't know how to play piano. Scalar two is a great oh, yeah. it's a great one. Like Amazing. like you yep. can you you can use scalar two and you can use the chords that are in scalar two and you could use another VST to oh, manipulate uh, Oh yeah, bro. It's um scalar you can do two so much. what else? You got Captain Chords. Captain Chords, yes. So, yeah. Yep. And Scalar too, like I said, it, it's cool. You know, you find a dope loop, throw it I in do. there. It'll tell, I, it'll tell you the cool. Right, man. Yeah, you I do, it. do those things. So use, tech, use the technology that we have to your advantage. Just don't don't get caught up in using. That's right. And, and letting the loop be the beat. That's right. And yo, I mean, even because I just switched over to Ableton Live. Ableton Live now has the piano roll feature that you find in FL Studio, so you can draw you can draw your chords in and make up chords on your own, which right in. See, and, that, and, that, and that's a that's a thing, man. We we have all of these, mm -hmm. you know, this, these these features and these DAWs. You know, we have this, so it, it definitely gives us a lot of flexibility. But again, that's right. be be creative with the loop. Let's leave it at that. Be creative with the loop. That's right. Be creative with the loop. Man, so speaking about sync stuff and you know how you should use what in, in that capacity, I want to talk about Triple S. Mm. Super Sync Squad. Okay. okay. So uh, like you can't even see the shirt. Yeah, Super yeah, Sync. Actually, Super Sync Squad. Actually, look, hold up. Hold up. Look, 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 look. I'm gonna see if I can pan it down, pan it up. Oh, oh right there is what we can see. Yeah. Right, well, Super Sync Squad. Super Sync okay. Squad. So well, let's Okay. So, Anyhow, so what was your motivation behind starting uh, Super Sync Squad? Okay, um, my motivation behind starting Super Sync Squad was, um, man, like I don't even remember how I came up with the name. To be honest, it was just almost like like an, an epiphany, you know, because that's just like my personality and stuff like that, and um, that's just like my personality, and I was just more like, uh, like. It's super. I don't know what I said to be honest, but it turned into Super Sync Squad, and I created this whole logo and everything. I'm like, oh my god, this looks cool because really it was about stepping, stepping it up a notch. You know what I mean? Where we went from not just I would say submitting music or really you know just leaving it leaving it to the wind to decide. We stepped it up and we went Super Saiyan, as you can say with getting our placements and really helping those around us and everything about us being just super or bigger or, and not necessarily better, but just a new approach and something that was fresh. So my motivation behind Super Sync Squad was just, again, slowly building, creating an entire um, squad of um, super sync producers, you know, because you have super producers out there, right? But it's almost like the same thing. You have super producers in the record industry, but then now we're going to have super producers in the film and TV industry. So that was kind of, um, that was kind of like my motivation behind just building something big, you know, building something that would stand out and that's not even traditional, just trying to change the game. Right. I'm trying to be part of Super Scene Squad one day. Hey, oh man, like when I, when I get my sync game up, <laughs> we get to sync. Well, I'm gonna say sync license, but yeah, you know, that, that's yeah. like the same, same, the same thing, man. But definitely, man. And, and people, you know, I get a lot, of, you know, a lot of questions, just like those, like, oh, I want to be with Super Sync Squad, and 
it's really it's not like an initiation kind of thing like like none of that man. i'm all about like I'm all, I'm all like about working with like good people um people who want to take time to understand and people who have patience and who understand that it's like you know it's not something that's going to happen overnight you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's like about everyone learning together and saying like yo when when your time comes just just be ready you know it's been times where I was able to kind of like pick people, not really like pick people off the blue, but I'm like, okay, well, I want to do this. Okay, boom, I could reach out to someone and then mm-hmm. they were able to immediately get something to me. I know it's not like that all the time, but again, it's just about having the resources and those people around you from engineers or rappers or singers or people who do sound effects, um, all those right. kind of things just make up what Super Sync, excuse me, what Super Sync Squad is becoming you know so right, right again definitely man you know you i'm trying to get jumped in let's do it <laughs> hit back hit back i'm trying to, back. I'm trying to get jump. i'm trying to get jumped in <laughs> yeah yeah let's do it <laughs> oh man uh, so so okay so 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 let, so let me ask so you got a lot going on right i didn't even talk oh. about like I didn't even mention in the very beginning, you know, as part of your introduction, I did when we did the the conversation on music uh, panel once again. Go yeah. check that out um, yeah, because the conversation on on sync licensing that we did with Nelson and Clint and with uh, Dre, yo, they dropped some crazy gems. Crate when I say crate, yeah, Def- gems. definitely go check that out. The bros, check are there. that out. Like we had we had a good time and definitely a lot of knowledge in the place. Yeah, yeah, definitely check that out people like you 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 got to you got to check it out uh but but because i know you're so busy and like i said i didn't talk about you know all the shows that you uh, have been working on with you know um, with vh1 bet own i'm like i didn't even name any of the channels and all that because it's it's a lot you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's a lot <laughs> it's when, a ladies and gentlemen when, when i tell you that this dude is really a true sync strategist and that he has placements in tons of shows Go look up Nelson K. Johnson and find out. You're you going to find out. I try, I try to update my IMDb um, as much as I can, and it's definitely growing. But um, from MTV, BT, OWN, VH1, um, Oxygen, Bravo, Nickelodeon, which was one of my favorite, favorite ones. I had an opportunity. And shout out to Morrison Young um, at the Morrison Young Music Library. Like Nickelodeon, that was like, one of my dopest placements. Uh, it was a promo actually. And I was just like, oh, it was like one of my, one of my dream placements actually, you know, I really enjoyed that, you know, cause I watched Nickelodeon growing up as a kid, but again, oh, yeah. um, Nickelodeon, ESPN, um, man, what else? Uh, oh, of course, WeTV, I think I already said VH1. We had a ton of placements on growing up hip hop last, this last season. Um, and we had places on every, just about like every episode. Um, I think it was like 11 episodes or something like that. Um, Tyler Perry's sisters. We had sisters with an A. We oh yeah, sisters. On, yeah, sisters, yeah. So we had placements on that. Of course, um, wait, where is it? Right there. Of course, Monogamy right there. <laughs> you trying to point you like. Right. So we're in season three of Monogamy, which um, that's on all, um, all black. Um, which are part, are part of the composer team for that, which has definitely been a blessing. Um, again, oh, Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, of course. So yeah, man, uh, there's a lot of a lot of music out there between me and people that I work with. And again, it's definitely been a blessing between being able to link up with people that work at production companies and then mm-hmm. so on my own and then working with music libraries i call it like the trifecta like you definitely don't don't just keep that laser focus and put all your eggs in one basket really focus on again getting with good publishers like music libraries getting with people that are on the inside again like supervisors coordinators things of that nature and then also really carving out your own path in your own network you know that's definitely going to lead to a lot of um, a lot of success so between that you know i've definitely had the opportunity to have music on um 
you know, a lot of different shows and it's definitely been a blessing. It's been fun to see, you know, when you start tracking music and then reruns come on and things like that. So yeah, the music, the music is out there, you know, the music is out there and it's been around and it's super, super dope. Super dope. Super sync squad. Yeah, right. I always say super. That's right. Yeah, super, again, super sync super squad. Dope, super sync squad. Definitely. That's right. Y'all better recognize Nelson K. Johnson, sync strategist. And yes, one, one placement too on, um, oh man, it was on Texas Metal. And this is for everybody out there, never throw away beats. And this just popped in my head, so I had to bring it. I don't know what channel that's on, but it's not a channel that I watch. But on my royalty statements, I keep I keep seeing it. And that was a beat that I made like 10 years ago. You know what wow. I mean? And I put it in a library. The library's Jingle Punks. I'm pretty sure you guys heard of that. So this was a long, long time ago that I put that beat in um, Jingle Punks library. Put it in there, forgot about it, went on about my business. And then randomly late last year, it popped up, you know, on my royalty statement. I was like, what? What is this? So I go look up the episode. <laughs> sure enough, it's that beat, you know. And it wasn't the dopest beat, but it found its place in the show. You know what I mean? And I was just That's like, right. ah, cool. So I get a little change from that every like every quarter, you know. And it's like, it's just cool because sometimes you know where the music is. And then sometimes mm. you don't, you know. You have control over the situation and where it goes. And other times you don't. And again it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't wouldn't be this way again without you know the the squad that helps me out from the people i collaborate with the libraries i work with my editor friends my supervisor friends you know shout outs to all y'all because they make a lot of this possible you know you gotta just make sure you keep a a really dope circle around you that's right dope circle around you man you know like bro we could go on for a while you know but we got to end sometime i guess yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe we get a maybe we get a part two or something going on. But yeah, I'll be, yeah uh, definitely. Let me know, man. I'll, I'll yeah. definitely be back. I always enjoy speaking with you for certain. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So 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 let's kind of wrap it up. Let's talk about your biggest pieces of advice for anybody trying to get into this into this crazy music industry. Uh, my biggest piece of advice is be a good person, be a good human. You know, have good energy. You know what I mean. Um, don't turn to a person who kind of hoards information, right? And a person who doesn't have the ability or who has the ability to offer opportunities, but chooses not to. And that's where I'm trying to build on is because when I have opportunities, I like to give other people opportunities if I can do so. You know, I like to share information and give them information if they ask for it. You know what I mean? And definitely things like this, it's a business. So, you know, you do coaching or consultations and things like that. But that, you know, that comes with the territory. But overall, my biggest piece of advice is definitely to be authentic and really focus on, you know, I said it again, just, just being a good person and having that good energy and always believing in yourself and keeping that focus so that, you know, if it, you don't get that placement today, you know, you might get it tomorrow. You might get it a month from now or six months from now. It might come a year from now. You know, it took that beat that I put in that library 10 years ago, just popped up back on my radar, you know, and for someone else, that could be a difference. Like, man, it finally paid off and that could be your moment. So always think about that and definitely be patient. But my biggest piece of advice, the big, big piece of advice I would say is definitely keep God first because without God, I know I wouldn't be like where where I am. And as cliche as it may sound, I'm telling you guys the absolute truth here and right now on April the 1st. I am telling you the truth. There were days that I sit and I prayed about these things. There were times where I would, you could ask my wife, I would walk around the house like I'm talking to somebody on the phone, like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, we can we can do it for this much. Okay, I'll have I'll have episode five in for you um by noon tomorrow. I would literally do that and kind of like, you know, amp myself up. You know what I mean? Because I, I I believed it. You know what I mean? I believed that I was gonna have these opportunities and that I was going to that I, were, I was going to do these things. So these are things that I went to sleep and I I prayed about. You know, I prayed like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I hope the music comes across as intended you know what i mean i know i made it i know what i made it for but 
you know, God put it in their heart that they hear it the way that I hear it and they put it where it needs to go and it finds its direction. So definitely keep God first and again, believe in yourself and really, you know, take that time to, you know, be cool, you know, be cool and be cool with other people because That's right. it's, it's, a, it's a network. It's a network thing. You know, you know, you meet, you meet people, you get cool with people and opportunities happen, you know? That's right. Yeah. Be yourself. The biggest piece of advice that can ever be given is to just be yourself, man. Nelson, appreciate that. So uh, for the final to... thing, tell people how they can connect with you. Where can they find you? All right. Now you can find me on Facebook at 85 productions, LLC, and you spell it all out one word. So 85 productions, LLC on Facebook. Um, you can find me on Instagram where I spend more time on Instagram than anything. You can find me there also at 85 productions, LLC. I am on Twitter, but not that much. But if you have a Twitter, you can hit me up on there at Composer Nelson K. And yo, I'll hit you back again. Hit me up with any questions or um, or anything. You know, I'm always open to talk and things like that. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Facebook, and Nelson's Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, oh, and Nelson's a great. And my website. I'm so sorry. I can't forget. Oh that. yeah, you gotta put my, that. It's in my bios, so you can find it. But www nelsonkjohnson.com um, if you want to learn about any coaching or any um, consultations or anything like that or more about Super Sync Squad, you can go to my website and visit me there as well. That's right. Super Sync Squad? Oh, yeah. yeah, But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's right. Uh, but once again, ladies and gentlemen, my guy, my man, the sync strategist, Nelson K. Johnson, brother, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, we had to get in the horn. We had to get in the horn more often, but uh, yeah. And plus, you know, there's some things in the work, you know, kind of saying we talked about that, yeah, um, yeah. which would be dope. That's gonna be that's gonna be super dope. Uh, so super, I'm looking forward. Okay. Yes, super. So I'm looking forward to forward to that, brother. Uh, but hold on one second. Um, stay on as I get ready to close this out. Okay, okay bet. Sure Ladies and gentlemen, man, what can I say? We, I mean, you got, you got gems all day. I mean, he dropped gems. Like, I don't know if you, y'all ain't ready for all them gems. But once again, Nelson K. Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, the sync strategist, a great human being, full of knowledge, full of expertise, uh, and definitely full of credits. Go check out that IMDB uh, for that work that he does. And hope the things that he's given you has been uh, inspirational even for you to start your journey into the, the world of sync licensing. But once again, thank you very much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate each and every person that watches all of our interviews, all of our uh, masterclass videos and all the things that we put out on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, help us to grow our YouTube channel uh, by subscribing to this particular channel. Make sure you hit the like button. All these things, all these interactions help us to rank higher and to provide this content to other music creators such as yourself. But once again, thank you very much for tuning in. Peace. Have a great night, morning, afternoon, whenever you're going to watch it. Uh, but um, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Check out, check out Nelson K. Johnson when you get that chance. Peace.